Welcome. We have a great episode lined up for you today. We are going to talk about a former employee who takes on TQL. We have talked about TQL many times on this show. We have talked about non-competes many times on this show. This is a little bit of a unique twist. I'll get to that in just a minute. But first, I want to remind everybody that Freightways has a conference coming up in Chattanooga. Make sure you guys go to Freightways' website and check out all the details. Everyone is going to be there. Do not miss out. Freightways has the best conferences. So make sure that you'll be there. I will be there and all my friends. Um, one more thing that I want to make sure that I tell everyone is about Carrier Assure. Y'all know that I launched Carrier Assure, which is the first performance score in our industry for carriers. So for those of you who are brokers and shippers and you are looking for carriers who will provide or better perform for you and you want to avoid the bottom feeders, those people who are double brokering, they have no insurance, they're causing cargo claims, they're late, they're ghosting you. If you want to avoid those carriers, go to my platform. Go to CarrierSure.com. There's a promo code. You get 30 days for free. Try it out. Reach out to me if you like it. They, we are celebrating, let me think. We're celebrating 1,024 users today. We've been live for three months, so I'm very excited. For those of you who cannot afford to pay for CarrierSure, you can always report carriers for wrongdoing for free. And you can look at the reports for free. So go to CarrierSure.com. Uh, and and sign up for your free account. No credit card, nothing is required to see the reports and make reports. All right, let's get the show on the road. It's Friday. I'm so excited. So I invited Pete Patterson to the show. Pete, welcome. I'm so excited to have you. Thank you for doing this for us. And also, thank you for taking on this fight. This is a big deal. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate being here and uh, ha happy to talk about it. I'm excited. I saw your post and I've reported on TQL quite a few times on my show. Um, it's a big company. They're a big company in our industry. They always got things going on. But the major thing that I constantly hear about is their culture and also their non-competes. Um, so I saw your post on LinkedIn. I saw Clarissa, the famous Clarissa's article um, that she wrote about you, your lawsuit. But tell us, um, um, first of all, uh, first Feel free to introduce yourself. I forgot to do that. I apologize. And then tell us um, how this how this lawsuit came into onto your radar into your radar. Uh, yeah, well, I'm Pete Patterson. I'm an attorney at a firm called Cooper and Kirk. The firm is in Washington D.C. I actually work out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, Stone's throw uh, by coincidence from where TQL is located. And um, this case is actually my client is my brother, so that's how it came on to mm. my radar screen. And what did your so what did your brother come to you? Did he say like, hey, I I, I got this new job and all, all shits hit the fan? Well, so so he, um, you know, most of this is in you know, I'm just going to go on what's in the uh, public documents. Mm -hmm. You know, we're in active litigation, so I have to uh, be a little uh, close to the best with what I say. But you know, yes, my brother was with TQL for 13 years, had a very good experience there, uh, left not because of any ill will or anything like that toward TQL, but rather because, uh, you know, he had a growing family as five children, uh, wanted to, um, you know, just go a little better work life balance. Um, and he left to go to an asset based trucking company. And then TQL sued him for violating the non compete. And in terms of the non compete, the real issue with the non compete is that it's extremely broad. And it says you can't go work for any competing business. And then the competing business is defined as, among other things, any entity engaged in shipping. So read literally, you know, you, you couldn't go be a postal worker or something like that. Um, and so courts and you couldn't go be a janitor at a uh, logistics firm. And so courts in several cases stretching back over a decade have said this is too broad. But in Ohio, courts have the authority to reform non-competes on a case-by-case -case basis. So that really creates an issue for people like my brother who cannot look at his contract and say, okay, I can go and do this, but I can't go and do that. And then there is a one-way fee-shifting provision in the agreement that says if TQL sues you and wins, you have to pay TQL's lawyers. And there's no corresponding fee that says if TQL sues you and loses, they have to pay for your lawyers. So wow. it's just a really uh, difficult situation for people that are considering leaving because there's no way to know um, exactly where the line is. And if you guess wrong, 
uh, you could have uh, ruinous consequences. Wow. So what I'm hearing you say is that he went to go work for a trucking company, not another brokerage. He was told he can't work for the trucking company. And then when you're looking at his agreement, it's saying, hey, if, you, if, if TQL sues you or the former employee, uh, Jacob, or you sue TQL, you have to pay TQL's lawyer fees if you lose. Is that right? Yes. It, yes. If, if wow. the employee So Jacob's loses, sitting there there's... saying, I got to pay a lawyer, and then potentially, I don't know if I'm going to win this because you never know if you're going to win. I might have to pay TQL's lawyers who could just say, I mean, what? We charge $500 an hour. Uh, that may be on the low end, yes. Um, and so, so yeah, it's just, sure. it just puts people in a very difficult situation. And yeah. what is interesting, in the case in the Ohio Supreme Court, adopted this doctrine that courts can rewrite non-compete contracts. The court said, we trust companies are not going to just draft broadly and let the courts fix it for them. It's been argued that they'll do that, but we don't think that uh, that is going to happen. But it appears that is what is happening in this case. Again, as I said, uh, this is the same or very similar language has been ruled overbroad for over a decade by the courts, and yet it has not. the language has not been amended. So what we're arguing in this case is the court should just throw out the non-compete altogether. Uh, TQL can go back to the drawing board. They can draft. We're not saying they can't have a non-compete, but we're saying they can go back mm -hmm. to the drawing board. They can draft a non-compete that actually complies with what the law allows for a non-compete. Um, and then that way, when people leave, it's not a mystery. They say, okay, I can go do this. I can't go that, do that. And there's not the uncertainty and there's not the potential overhang of this uh, attorney's fees provision, which is what really makes it difficult for people. So tell me about what happened with, so, you know, your brother was at this trucking company and then yeah. he had to leave because it violated its non-compete, but then he went to work for an insurance com insurance broker, right? So that should have been okay. Yeah. Well, okay, not, so here's what, hey, we don't concede insurance. that he violated his non-compete. We're still in that case. We're still arguing he has not violated. So after 15, okay. 16 months in that case, um, uh, we were, uh, TQL approached us and said, we're going to seek to add your company to the case. And at that point, I think that was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back and, and Jacob just decided I'm leaving and I'm going to go do something else. So, uh, and actually his last day, I believe was yesterday. So he, he's no longer working for PBJ Express, oh, wow. the trucking company. And so he was looking for other employment. Um, and one such job was an insurance company. And he had a, an interview lined up and they, apparently they have TQL as a client. And shortly before the interview was scheduled to take place, he got a text message from his contact uh, at that company who said, I spoke with Chris Brown yesterday and uh, it, it basically the message was it would harm our relationship with TQL if we were to hire you, so we can't hire you. Um, and, and, you know, that is a classic example of what we say in the complaint, which is tortious interference, which is a, just a fancy way of saying with uh, getting in the way of someone else's opportunity. Uh, in a way without any legal justification. So that's what's alleged in the complaint that we filed last week. Um, you know, that suit is still in its infancy. So, you know, obviously we'll have to prove those claims and I'm sure TQL will have defenses, but, you know, based on what Jacob was told was the reason that this interview was canceled and his job prospects with this company were no longer there was because TQL had said, you know, it wouldn't be a good idea for our relationship with you if you hire him. That is wild. I want everybody to pause for a moment and think about Jacob and his journey. He was with TQL for 13 years. He goes to a trucking company, um, not another brokerage. Then he goes to and tries to go to an insurance brokerage. And everyone's saying, well, you know, you can just get another job. Why doesn't you just get a job completely out of the transportation industry? And you don't think about this when you sign this agreement. So so I've been a lawyer for the past 10 years in the transportation industry. I have I have dealt with tons of non-compete issues, and I hate the agreements. And I hate them because employees don't realize sometimes they're even signing them. 
um, and employees don't realize the full impact of signing them. When, you're, when you enter into the transportation industry, and obviously uh, Pete and I are not your lawyers, we're just giving this information, we're just talking about this lawsuit, and I'm just giving some guidance. Uh, you got to actually talk to a lawyer uh, about whatever you're about to sign and the situation you have. But when listen to me carefully, when you're about to sign one of these agreements, it, so something about the transportation industry, when you get into it, and even when you've only been into it for like a year, year and a half, two years, it is very hard to get out. It is hard to convince a company to hire you completely out of our industry because all your skills become specialized for our industry. All your connections are in our industry. So you have to think very carefully about what you are going to do when your non-compete is in this in play. And I also want you to think about Jacob because Jacob is lucky to have Pete who went to Stanford, who is very experienced, who clearly even crafting the, the complaint, Pete, I could tell you are creative, you're a well writer, like you've got this. But Jacob's lucky to have you because many people who are in the position that Jacob's in cannot afford a high profile profile lawyer. They cannot even afford a basic lawyer because when you got to fight something like this, it's going to cost you a lot of money. And and you have to be ready for that. And then here, he's got to roll the dice that he could pay for somebody else's um, legal fees, especially when you're in a jurisdiction where you have a huge company like TQL sitting right next to the courthouse. This is dramatic. But you have to think about that too. So I want everybody to think about that when you're about to sign this, because there's been so many times where many of you have come to me and been like, Cassandra, I really want this career opportunity. I really want this company. They're going to pay me so much more money. I'm so excited, Cassandra. But then I got to sign a non-compete. And I'm like, don't do it. Negotiate the terms. Shorten the duration. List the competitors. Go to six months. List the competitors you can't work for. List the positions you can't do. Think about the, what your career is going to happen. And I dust my big rant for now. So, Pete, here's the question for you. Could you explain, because this is the other thing that's going to happen in um, just for information purposes only, could you explain to us the difference between a non-solicit and a non-compete and the confidentiality clauses? Because those are the three main clauses that people sign when they when they are set yeah, up. Yeah, and TQLs uh, has all of them uh, in the contract. So there's a confidentiality provision that basically says you can't use confidential information from the company and take that and then use it uh, in a future business. And that never expires, according to the contract. And one, there is a provision in the contract also, and this is interesting, that says if you go to a competing business, you necessarily will use confidential information. So if you read the contract literally, and there's no endpoint on that term, it would say you could never go to a competing business, not just the one year term. But, uh, you know, I don't, I haven't seen any court uphold that. Uh, but a court in South Carolina, South Carolina Court of Appeals picked up on this and they didn't apply the contract for other reasons. But there was one judge who wrote and said, yeah, this is what the contract says. And this would be too hard to reform. So we're just not going to enforce this contract at all. Uh, mm. And this was a similar, actually not as broad uh, to the extent it was different, non-compete in South Carolina uh, several years ago. So that's a confidential information provision. A non-compete means you can't go and work for particular employers. Again, in the TQL contract, it's defined to include any entity engaged in shipping. So that's why uh, we've used uh, examples in our briefing, like being a driver for DoorDash or being a postal worker. Some of the cases say, you know, you couldn't go be a janitor at the logistics company. Um, so a non-compete means that you can't, you know, go work for a certain specified uh, employers and the big the problem one of the problems in the TQL contract is that they're not specified. Uh, it, it would be great if they were specified, and then somebody could know. Okay, this is what I'm allowed to do or not. And then a non-solicit would be okay. I can't solicit uh, my former clients at a company like TQL, so I can't take my I'll be dating myself my Rolodex uh, from TQL and over to some new business and then start calling them and say, Hey, I'm somewhere else now. You need to come with me. So, um, so those are the three basic things. And, and again, the, the TQL contract has all three. And that's another argument that we've been making is if you have the non-solicit, um, why mm -hmm. do you need the non-compete? Uh, because if someone, it, it, again, the Ohio courts have been clear in this area that 
these contracts are only to protect you from legitimate or from illegitimate competition, uh, from people trying to uh, take advantage of insider knowledge or do things that would be unfair. But they're not meant to protect people from legitimate competition. Uh, and if you've already got mm -hmm. a non-solicit in the agreement, what you know what we've argued is there's no need for a non non-compete because if they go work somewhere else, as long as they're not trying to uh, you know poach clients or anything like that, it's not clear why additional protection is needed. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you for that explanation. Um, sometimes employees will leave the company, and they don't. Some of them don't even know. But they'll take a, an entire list of carriers and their contact information, and shipments and lanes, things like that. Um, did any of that happen here in this case? Uh, what we have said in this case, Jacob has you know, submitted uh, sworn declarations, is that no, none of that happened. He just uh, he went strictly to this trucking company. It was an asset-based company. I think the hope was, you know, it was one of, Jacob's client uh, suppliers while he was at TQL, I think the hope was that it could be kind of a win-win, yeah. a good relationship um, yeah. and expand upon that relationship between TQL and PBJ. Um, but in, instead, what happened is in the complaint, TQL alleged that Jacob might interfere with TQL's business with PBJ, with this trucking company. But then I you know, put up on LinkedIn our response to, and we allege this in the new suit, our response to the TQL lawsuit. And then TQL went to PBJ and said, unless you guys take that down, we're cutting PBJ off uh, from TQL. And we didn't take it down. And wow. uh, PBJ got cut off uh, from business with TQL. So, um, wow. so I think we just want to get these arguments out there about the non-compete, just so people are aware. We're not encouraging anyone to breach any contracts. We're not encouraging anyone not to work anywhere, to leave from anywhere, but just, uh, you know, there are these arguments that are out there. And I think a lot of times people, uh, like you say, may not have access to uh, the same, uh, you know, to, to legal advice or, or may be uncertain. Of course, people need to consult with their own attorneys, but uh, we just want to make sure that these, these arguments, which are, we, we feel very serious arguments under Ohio law are, are out yeah. there for people to hear. Well, there are a lot of brokers and shippers that watch the show. I hope that they look up PBJ. Where's PBJ located? It's in, in Missouri. Ohio? Missouri. In Missouri. I hope they look them yes. up. I hope they give them freight um, and, and help out that company for the, the situation that they're in. Um, there were a lot of people on my post um, who, who had a lot to say about um, non-competes. Uh, it was interesting to read that people had said, you know, like Caroline, she's a tech marketing expert. She said, non-competes are so 80s. When will these be banned? Jeffrey says, I understand the reasoning behind non-solicit and confidentiality agreements, but non-competes are predatory. The desire to prevent people from seeking future employments needs to be viewed in the present time for what it is, predatory. Non-competes need to go. Um, and I, there were a lot of these um, statements. Philip said, this behavior by TQL has been common knowledge for years, yet people still do business with them. I've always wondered that too. Um, when does it reach a tipping point where there's enough people who don't use them to motivate change? How many potential good people has the industry lost who signed up with them not knowing better because they're young? Um, TQL is not a problem. They're a symptom. I almost fell into this trap 10 years ago when changing industries. So a lot, I mean, there's a lot of these comments, very highly intelligent, experienced people in our industry. I recommend that everybody goes to my post, uh, Cassandra Gaines on LinkedIn, and read, read what people have had to say, um, because it's enlightening. And I hope that everybody out there protects themselves and thinks about Jacob and what Jacob's gone through, you know, 13 years of being loyal to this company. And now he's unfortunately has his brother fighting for him. But think about that before you sign one of those agreements. So, Pete, is there anything else we need to know about this lawsuit? Anything else about the situation um, that we haven't touched on? No, I think uh, I've touched on most of the important aspects. I mean, just to touch on the last thing of what you said about reform, I mean, there is the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, has been having discussions about non-competes and what is going to be the future of the non-competes. Um, there have been many state attorney generals who have been very active 
in doing investigations and looking into, okay, our business is using these non-competes unfairly. And so there definitely is getting some, uh, some attention. And I think in this suit, you know, if we end up going to the Ohio Supreme Court in this suit, I think we would argue that based on some of these things, based on, you know, what has occurred mm -hmm. in this case, the court should throw out this doctrine that says that courts can rewrite contracts um, to make them uh, to make them reasonable because the premise, as I said, that that doctrine was based on was that companies would not just cast a broad net and rely on judges to reform it in a case by case basis. Uh, that has been proven incorrect, at least in this instance. And, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on with other companies, but I think that just puts a tremendous chilling effect on people. It's unfair yes. that they don't know what they can do, what they can't do. Um, if there's going to be a yep. non-compete, it should be objective, uh, easy to understand, and have clear lines. Yep. And I want everybody to remember this is not Pete's position. This is mine saying, myself saying this. That <laughs> don't forget that a lot of these judges are state they're state judges, they are elected judges, and corporations can sponsor some of their elections. And there's a lot, a whole lot of things you need to Google and read about there as well. Pete, thank you very, very much. This has been informative. I wish you the best of luck. Please keep us in the loop and maybe we'll come back on when you feel you have some some more to tell us about the situation. But I really appreciate it. Okay, I do. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you and happy Friday, everybody. And I hope everybody has a great week. We will find we will see you guys on Mad Games next week. Hey, freight brokers. Ty TMS is